Welcome to the eCommerce Paradise YouTube channel, your ultimate resource for building a successful high ticket dropshipping business. Our channel is dedicated to providing you with the latest insights and trends in e-commerce, as well as proven strategies and tactics for building a profitable online business. Whether you're just starting out or you're looking to take your business to the next level, you'll find everything you need to succeed right here on the eCommerce Paradise YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to stay up to date on the latest e-commerce tips, strategies, and insights. And if you haven't already, be sure to visit ecommerceparadise.com slash niches to get our free niches list and mini course for high ticket dropshipping. Thanks for tuning in and let's get started. What's up everybody? Welcome to e-commerce paradise. Today we're going to be talking about how to start a business with little to no money. Kind of a cool topic to consider because a lot of people are always trying to think about ways to make money without having to have money to start with, right? You guys leave a comment on the live channel and the live feed and let me know uh, what kind of business you want to start um, or uh, what kind of, uh, you know, uh, things that you have that you're passionate about that you think you'd want to make money with. And I think that's kind of where we all start, right, is passion and money. And we all want to make money doing something that we're passionate about. So how to do that? Well, there's a lot of cool ways to do it nowadays. And especially with the Internet, you can obviously make content like I'm doing here and try to make money that way. Or you can sell something online with e-commerce. That's what I teach here. Uh, using drop shipping as a fulfillment method. You can create a product yourself. You can write a book. You can do so many things. So, um, but how do you really, really um, start with no money? Well, that's impossible. <laughs> let's just be, let's just make it clear. You're going to have to have enough money to buy a laptop computer, or, you know, you can borrow one from a friend maybe, or you can go down to your local library and use a computer or something like that. Um, you can get creative and resourceful. And um, let's just be honest that, you know, we all have some money somewhere, some resources. So it's not really about having money, it's about being resourceful and trying to find money. Um, so you know, your parents or your friends or something like that, or just get a job. Um, that's usually the best way to start to get some money. Once you have a little bit of money to work with, and we're not talking much, maybe a hundred bucks, 200 bucks or something like that, you can start creating content and you can start uh, looking for suppliers. You can start you know, researching online and you can find ideas for niches that you'd want to sell. And niches, niche selection is usually the first place you start. It's like, what am I going to sell online? Um, am I going to sell uh, my services? And if you decide to sell services, what category of services are you going to provide? Are you going to provide consulting services or are you going to provide um, some sort of like content writing services or graphic design? Uh, it just, uh, you know, it depends what you have experience with. If you're going to sell a product online, it really depends what, you know, product you kind of have experience with and understand and stuff like that. Because selling products online isn't super simple. You have to really understand the product and you have to understand, um, you know, what it takes to build a really good website and an optimized sales funnel and a marketing follow-up and stuff like that and uh, have a really good system for bringing in leads and trying to convert those leads into sales. So bottom line, um, you know, niche selection is the most important thing as far as like what you're going to do and then as far as what you're going to sell, it's also super important. And the best thing to think about is um, something that's not overly competitive, but something that you know, also does have com competition, and competition is usually a good thing. It means that you are going to be able to compete because there is demand. So make sure that you're not trying to enter a market where there's no competition because usually that's not a great thing either. Um, the next thing you can think about is uh, how much, you know, how many suppliers or how, how good is the supply of this product? Are you going to be able to find a supplier and um, are you going to be able to do business with that supplier profitably? And it's a really good thing to think about because um, when you research your competitors, you'll be able to see like, what their suppliers are. If you're thinking of making a private label product, for instance, you can go to Alibaba.com and try to research suppliers there of that product. If you're thinking about doing drop shipping, you can research your competitors and try to find what brands they're selling on their website already ready and then you know you'll have a list of competitors a list of suppliers and some ideas of products that you can sell just kind of based on your competitors websites that's usually what you know I work with is what are my competitors already doing that works really well and then try to go from there and just make something that works that's very similar so that's that um, the other thing I wanted to approach was the idea that you can create content nowadays extremely inexpensively um, using a tool called ChatGBT. ChatGBT is becoming really popular, and it's something that has enabled a lot of people to become content marketers and to just scale their content marketing generation and everything like that um, at very low cost. Now, ChatGBT is really cool because it's uh, an AI trained to create really 
good uh, quality content and to be able to answer questions and be able to um, make things with good grammar and you know all that stuff. So you can really make great SEO quality content already just by plugging into ChatGPT questions and teaching it a little bit maybe about your niche if it needs it, but generally speaking, it spits out really good content. So um, you can start making a blog or even start like a YouTube channel or podcast just by asking ChatGPT, hey, can you give me some topic ideas for a YouTube channel about this or about a podcast about that or a blog about this? And it'll give you topics and then you can ask it to write blog posts for you. You can ask it to write video scripts or podcast scripts for you, all that stuff. So it's a really great tool and it's uh, free to try out. And then they have like a $20 um, upgrade option or whatever. So uh, ChatGPT is really, really cool. So I highly recommend checking it out and trying it out um, because it can create amazingly good content for you and um, obviously at a very low cost. Now, should you use it alone by itself? Probably not. You should probably take the content ChatGPT creates and then kind of add your own uh, kind of flavor to it, your own human humanity to it, you know, um, that and or just optimize it, make it look pretty if it's like on a vlog or something like that. And, um, you know, just kind of use your own mind because people can kind of tell sometimes when AI creates content because it's just like too perfect almost and a little bit too simple. Whereas with human generated content, it's a little bit more, you know, I don't want to say like imperfect, but just kind of more human, you know, and humans are imperfect, so that's kind of what we actually appreciate about each other is when we show like our imperfect parts about us and, and share the things about our life that is, you know, not perfect. So, <clears throat> yeah, with that said, um, there's a lot of different ways you can make money online without, you know, using much money to start up. And dropshipping is one of them, and that's probably the number one way I recommend to do it. But um, that's because that's what my experience is. So let's go over just a few different ideas. Um, there's quite a few different ways you can do it, but um, the the benefits and drawbacks of each one kind of you know can change depending on who you are and, and what your experiences are and stuff like that. But the first thing is an e-commerce business, so selling products online. The next thing is a different type of e-commerce business, which is a digital products business. Um, you can sell things like books, courses, uh, software, or music and um, any other, like, you know, blueprints and things like that too. So there's a lot of different types of product you can sell online that are digital. And uh, you, if you haven't read The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, a book that was produced a long time ago, but um, it still is very relevant to today, it's got a section in there about digital products. And he talks about this guy who, you know, wrote, um, you know, uh, basically sold, you know, music and made a lot of money doing it and was able to travel and stuff like that and, you know, live location independent and uh, make good money that way. So... It's a great way to make money. Um, affiliate marketing is another one. Um, affiliate marketing has a lot of benefits, but also a lot of drawbacks. But the great thing about it is that it's mostly passive, is that you're working on marketing the stuff and getting leads for other people's offers as opposed to just for your own. So affiliate marketing is really good. Um, I think more in like the sense of a... Um, complementary thing to what you're already doing. Maybe you have a digital products business and you want to promote other people's like, you know, similar products to yours or something like that, then do some affiliate marketing on the side. If you have an e-commerce business, kind of a similar thing there. Um, if you want to go full-time with affiliate marketing, um, usually what people end up doing is they do affiliate marketing to start with, and then they kind of move away from that and create their own version of that product eventually. Because usually what happens, which is kind of weird with affiliate stuff, is that um, you'll get into something and you'll start... Uh, you know, really uh, doing well selling it, like almost too well, right? You're selling too much of it. And then the publisher, whoever it is that is selling that product notices that and they see you're doing too well and they try to figure out why. And then um, eventually sometimes, you know, you just, uh, they, they kick you off or something and they decrease the commission or whatever. So if you're doing too good, sometimes um, that's actually not such a good thing, but that means that you're really good at selling something. So why don't you just create your own version of it and sell that? Um, obviously, it takes more startup, but if you have the money that you got from the commissions for sales in the first place and you're smart and saved that, then you can use that to create your own version of it. All right, so another thing that is very popular, of course, is uh, drop shipping, which basically means that you don't have to hold any inventory of the product you sell online. So a lot of people think about like selling products online and they think, oh, I have to like order this much stock and hold it somewhere and ship it out myself. And yeah, that is a business model. It's called, usually called private labeling or creating custom products, your own products or whatever. Um, but 
dropshipping is way better um, to start because you don't really have to do that and you can test the market first. So there's lots of dropshipping suppliers, um, especially for like merchandise, print on demand stuff. Um, there's one called Printful and um, there's other print on demand stuff, but you can get any, take any design and put it onto a, um, a t-shirt or like a mug or um, lots of other different types of products and then sell it online to your audience. And, uh, and that's a great way to do business to start, especially for content creators. Another great way to do it is to um, actually have a more product specific focused business. And that is like with high ticket dropshipping, for instance, you're selling a specific type of large or expensive product. Um, if you just look around the house, you can sell, you know, chair, office chairs, refrigerators, uh, couches, uh, tables, um, you know, podcast microphones. Um, what's another good example, uh, dining room tables, water, uh, filter, cooler things. Lots of things behind me are high ticket. So you can sell those products online and you can make quite a bit of money doing it. Um, you just have to dive into the product uh, category itself and find the competitors and the suppliers and um, you know make a website and all that stuff, be a retailer. All right, so another good way to make money online uh, without much money up front is actually by starting your own blog. Now, blogs are really hard to start now because it's hard to rank in Google, but if you understand SEO and backlinks, then you can get a blog to rank pretty good, uh, pretty quick in the low competition keywords. So with blogging, I think it's even the most important thing is to focus on keywords with low competition to start with. And then once you have some content ranking for those long, low competition keywords, you can link from those articles to the one, the articles targeting the high competition keywords to get some link juice there. And then you can start getting more backlinks and you can really actually grow a blog pretty well. And especially if you make good content, I think the key is checking out your competitors and seeing, you know, who you're competing with on the first page of Google and uh, trying to match how good their quality of content is with blogging. It's a little bit more competitive these days. You're dealing with bigger websites with really high domain ratings. So um, anything for organic SEO is difficult. Now you can also do a lot of uh, YouTubing and uh, YouTube is almost better than doing blogging now because a lot of people just like to watch YouTube videos and like to be on social media and watch videos and stuff like that. So um, YouTubing is actually, um, in my opinion, a better way to start because it's just easier to get yourself out there and your content out there. Um, blogging takes a lot more work up front and or money. So usually the way I recommend people to start is by creating video content. Um, on social media or YouTube and then creating a blog from that and then, you know, kind of using that as the funnel to funnel people into an offer, into a lead generation funnel and then sell them something on the back end like a product or a service or a course or whatever it is. All right, let's talk about another really popular um, <clears throat> way to make money without much money up front uh, that a lot of people use out of that, which is a coaching business or a consulting business. It's kind of what I'm doing with e-commerce paradise. Um, you know, there's lots of different types of coaching you can do and people um, can do it from wherever they are. So it doesn't really matter where you are. You can do it from anywhere. Um, you can do business coaching like I'm doing, but you can also do things like uh, life coaching or um, you can do yoga coaching or you can do uh, be a skateboard coach. You could be a surf coach, um, whatever it is that you have experience with. So I think that's the main thing and whatever it is that people um, need and want uh, and are willing to pay for. Okay. That's a great niche for coaching. So try to think about that. And um, the best way to promote it is through YouTube and social media. And the best way um, to uh, get leads and to close sales is through a sales funnel. And that is using an opt-in form with a lead generator, creating an email sequence to sell somebody on an offer, sending them to a landing page that is basically a sales page, and um, you know, closing that sale via either um, some sort of a form sign up if it's a more expensive thing or just having a low ticket offer that has really good, you know, optimization built into it. So, um, and, or, you know, what usually what coaches do is they want to sign someone up. Um, they have some sort of a consultation with them first. And so that's why I recommend doing some sort of a form sign up for that. All right, some other things, some other ideas I have here just to add to this is a social man media management business so you can help people manage their social media accounts. Um, another thing that's popular is ad management, um, but you really gotta have experience in that already. So if you know what you're doing, if you've done it for yourself probably or something like that, then you can probably do it for somebody else. Um, web development and design is another idea. If you have any experience building websites, then you can make money by selling those kinds of services to people as well. Um, having an online marketplace is another good idea. Online marketplaces are cool. They help 
uh, buyers connect to sellers, and you can think of any kind of marketplace. People buy used cars on, people buy anything used. Um, those are marketplaces, and uh, you can set that up pretty easy with a WordPress um, you know, hosting and um, some plugins and uh, build out a funnel for buyers and a funnel for sellers and you know, uh, build it that way. So online marketplaces are really cool because um, you're not the one creating all the content. It's usually going to be your users that are creating the content. And then um, usually the people that are selling something can pay you a little bit of something to list on that website. All right, and the last thing I'll talk about is some kind of a software as a service business. Now, this usually requires some kind of coding skills up front, especially if you don't want to pay a bunch of money. So if you don't know how to code, you should just probably start with you know, HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript, um, Shopify would be a good one to learn because that's really popular nowadays. Um, if you want to learn, you can learn uh, how to code with WordPress. Um, there's lots of different types of code out there. So um, software as a service is actually really, really good because a lot of people want to be able to automate their businesses. So, um, and a lot of people want to be able to optimize and don't really know how to mess with the code. Coding, um, it takes a lot of time to learn. So uh, if you have any experience with coding, then you can definitely offer that, offer that as a service just up front, kind of in a manual way. And then if you want to build that out automation, like as an automation, you can create a software um, to kind of serve the same purpose. You can think of like um, SEO service companies, um, what they do usually is that they create a software platform to provide the similar service on a self-serve basis that they would provide to a client normally uh, just by doing the research manually. So just a really good example of a software as a service business. Um, so let's talk about some like benefits and drawbacks really quick of e-commerce and dropshipping and stuff like that because that's kind of one of the things I mostly focus on on this channel is e-commerce and dropshipping. Um, obvious benefits are the low startup costs. Um, compared to traditional businesses, dropshipping has a lower startup cost, um, doesn't require physical inventory um, or storage space or fulfillment centers and things like that. Um, you're going to be relying on your suppliers for all that stuff. Now, if you want to, you can eventually create your own products and stuff like that out of like, things that sell really well, um, but it does take a little bit more upfront to invest in that. Um, the, another good thing is flexibility and scalability. Dropshipping businesses can scale much larger without having to invest so much. So it's not such a cash flow intensive business as a physical retail stop, store, so that's really cool. Um, there's a little bit reduced risk with dropshipping because you don't have to purchase that inventory up front, but um, you know, there still is financial risk associated with you know, chargebacks and things like that um, and damaged merchandise. But for the most part, um, you can dispute chargebacks and things like that and still win. Uh, low overhead costs, and um, so you don't really have to hire employees. You can hire virtual assistants if you want, but you don't have to pay for like all the insurance and things like that. Um, and you don't have to put a, like a roof over their head. They're working from home, so um, you know. And you can hire Filipino assistants for three to five dollars an hour, depending on the skill set. And they speak great English, and they do really good work. And they usually have very fast computers. Um, the BPO industry in the Philippines is very large, so it's a great place to outsource. Um, and, of course, you can have access to a very wide range of products. Um, now, there is kind of a debate whether it's good to do a niche dropshipping store versus a general wide dropshipping store. And you really just have to think about the niche. So if you're selling you know, saunas, for instance, you might want to think about considering that um, people that are into saunas are into health and wellness, that are into um, you know, working out and home gym stuff. Uh, and you know, so they're probably not into something that is unrelated to that, you know, that you might want to sell on the same store if it was a general store, right? And so um, it's easier to do marketing with niche stores than it is to do with general stores. And it's a lot easier to serve their marketing to the people you know, at the right time and with the right message. As opposed to with a general store, you really have to do a lot more work to be able to break down exactly who this customer is and what they're interested in and why you know, they're at your store and stuff like that. Um, and automating that is a lot more difficult. So. Um, it's a little bit easier for beginners to start a niche store, so that's what I usually recommend for beginners. Um, when you're more advanced with your marketing capabilities and all that, and your understanding of e-commerce and niches, then you can go into a general store. A lot of people start general stores just to be able to test niches and see which one works, and that's not a bad idea either. If you kind of have a good idea of how to run ads, then you can just test niches, find something that sells, and then start niche stores around those things. Um, so that's not a bad idea too. 
Um, but generally speaking with e-commerce, you really just have to sort of try things out. Um, there's a lot of trial and error, and I've gone through a ton of that, and that's why I'm doing e-commerce paradise and kind of teaching it now because I've done this for over a decade. Um, I got started initially in high school, actually, so back in like 2004, three maybe, um, selling on eBay, and then after that in college, selling you know used books on Amazon from my uh, college textbooks, and then throughout college, I was asked also, you know, um, kind of doing like garage sale flipping and stuff like that to, to learn how to uh, source products and, and do market research and create descriptions and sell them and make some money on the side as kind of a side hustle. And then after that, I got my first dropshipping supplier and, you know, started dropshipping on third party platforms. Then I discovered WordPress and sold on my own website and then kind of transitioned to Shopify after that and learned how to run ads and really dove into like different rabbit holes, like analytics rabbit holes and uh, SEO rabbit holes and ads um, and optimization. And once I learned all that stuff and could put it all together, then I could build a really successful business. But it really isn't until I put it all together that the business was really successful. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. Um, it's also good to know some of the drawbacks of dropshipping, especially with high ticket, before you would get started with it, because if you don't really know and you get into it, then you'll kind of be disappointed later on. There's a few things you have to keep in mind. So um, the first thing is that you are really dependent on your suppliers for the success of your business. Uh, so the suppliers can make or break your business, and that's happened to me where I have had a business broken before from bad suppliers. So you really have to know like which suppliers that you should work with and which ones you wouldn't. Um, and it really just depends on the quality of the product and the quality of the service. So you'll, again, learn this through mostly trial and error, but the thing about it is that you want to make, make sure that you're focused on the ones that provide really good service and good product quality. Um, having dependency on suppliers means also that your margins depend on the margins they give you. So you can't really create your own margins. You have to base the pricing off the pricing that they set. Okay, So they're going to usually set like an MSRP or a MAP pricing. MSRP stands for... Uh, Manufactured suggested retail price, MAP stands for minimum advertised price, and they're going to want you to stick to those prices on your website so that the competition is leveled and there's a le level playing field. But the main thing is that you want to be able to provide value beyond that so that you can get those sales from a big retailer or from your niche competitors and things like that. Um, but yeah, so what I usually do to kind of overcome this uh, drawback is that I do a lot of research in the very beginning. So I want to find on all my competitors' websites, what are the suppliers and the brands that are selling the best? So that's going to be the main thing. Uh, the best selling suppliers and brands are really going to take your business to the next level. Um, out of that, what are the best selling products um, in that suppliers? And you can just go, if they have a Shopify store, it's really easy. You can just go to the collection page for the brand and sort by best seller and you'll find the best selling suppliers and the best selling products. Um, and I'll get into more niche research stuff later on. But um, by doing this research ahead of time, you'll really be able to narrow down and break down exactly which suppliers and products are, you're going to be able to win with. So that's why research up front is critical. And then you'll be able to guide your team better as to like what they should focus on for outreach and recruiting and focus on for uploading and optimization. And then you'll know what to focus on for SEO and ads as well to get traffic. All right, and then another big issue with dropshipping is inventory. Um, and I'm going to have to end this video pretty soon because I think somebody's coming in the door right now. But um, yeah, let's just stop after this. Um, inventory is really, really important, guys. Uh, you know, suppliers' inventory levels can go up or down at any time. So um, things can change dramatically about your business, and it can be kind of tough to deal with. So um, another one is shipping fulfillment, low profit margins, and competition. So that's it, guys. And I'll get into the next video later. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you out there. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you're interested in starting your own high ticket dropshipping business, don't forget to visit ecommerceparadise.com slash niches to get our free niches list and mini course for beginners. And make sure to subscribe to our channel for more e-commerce tips and strategies. See you in the next video.